How does ROS production occur? ROS is an unavoidable consequence of aerobic metabolism of glucose by the mitochondria. They are partially reduced metabolites of molecular oxygen generated as products of metabolic reactions or as byproducts of various cellular processes. Generally, ROS is needed by the body to control apoptosis or degradation of used and old cells so that there can be regeneration of new cells. In addition, they are needed to get rid of damaged cells, access proteins, and more, therefore leading to more space for new cells. However, if there is an accumulation of ROS, it could result in the cell entering a state of oxidative stress. The threats to normal healthy cells include oxidation of proteins, peroxidation of lipids, damage to nucleic acids, enzyme inhibition, and apoptosis of functioning healthy cells. The mitochondrial theory. Mitochondria are both the producers and targets of ROS. Oxidative stress attacks mitochondria, leading to increased oxidative damage. The damaged mitochondria become gradually less efficient, losing their original functional integrity. They end up releasing more ROS, which in turn increases the oxidative damage to the mitochondria. Therefore, there is an accumulation of dysfunctional mitochondria with age. ROS especially damages mitochondrial DNA. Mutations like deletions and point mutations in mitochondrial DNA are part of the aging process in postmitotic organs and tissues like the brain. These mutations occur at higher levels in aged individuals, especially in the control region, responsible for mitochondrial DNA transcription and replication. The mitochondrial DNA defects due to oxidative stress impair cellular respiration, which reduces cellular energy output. The bioenergetic decline leads to cellular senescence, aging, and degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinsonism. A telomere is the region of repetitive nucleotide sequences at each end of a chromosome which protects the chromosome from deterioration or fusion with neighboring chromosomes. They have important roles in cellular processes such as chromatic organization and control of cell proliferation. Telomeres are highly susceptible to oxidative stress and consequently results in telomere shortening. Telomeres shorten with each round of DNA replication because they lack the enzyme telomerase. However, oxidative stress increases the quantity by which it is shortened, therefore accelerating telomere loss. Telomere shortening is associated with aging, mortality and age-related diseases. Antioxidants are compounds that inhibit oxidation and therefore keep ROS levels low. Antioxidants are produced to counteract oxidative stress generated by excess ROS. However, in times of environmental stress, elevated ROS levels can overwhelm endogenous cellular antioxidant mechanisms, which result in excess ROS accumulation. Mitochondrial DNA is located in close proximity to the site of ROS production, making it highly susceptible to oxidative damage. This is amplified by the fact that mitochondria do not possess efficient DNA repair mechanisms. The resulting aberrant mitochondrial function leads to increased oxidative stress and neuronal damage and cognitive decline. Is this theory dead or alive? The problem with the old theory is that researchers continue to struggle to prove this theory, that one can extend the lifespan by slowing down these mutations. Feeding antioxidants to mice and other organisms hasn't had a big impact on their lives. And in fact, one of the new theories is that free radicals may be somewhat beneficial and can extend lifespan. Although more arguments found that this free radical theory of aging is not the key component in the aging process as it was once believed to be, it has formed the foundation of most of the new theories of aging that are being proposed today. One of the main theories today centers around NADH, NAD ratio, and SIR2P activity. This theory centers on the communication between proteins that are made in the nucleus by our genomic DNA and those proteins which travel across the cytoplasm into the mitochondria and help the mitochondria be healthy. This communication between the two different DNA molecules ensures that sufficient energy is produced to meet the cell's energy demands. 
This theory was supported by the following research experiment performed by Professor David Sinclair. After one week of raising the cellular NAD in the mice, the nucleus was able to re-establish communications with the mitochondria. When examining the muscles and heart of these mice, they appear to have the structural appearance of that of younger mice. Another theory accuses the overactivation of growth promoting signaling pathways such as the TOR or MTOR pathway. The nutrient sensing MTOR pathway is activated by insulin, growth factors and nutrients. In turn, it increases protein synthesis, stimulates cell mass growth and inhibits autophagy. Some of the theoretical problems with the Ross model are its inability to explain why the germline is immortal, while the soma is mortal, and why free radicals don't damage the germline. It was theorized that somatic repair is limited by energetic resources that are allocated for growth and reproduction. However, if anti-aging repair and therefore lifespan were limited by resources such as food, then an increased food consumption would extend lifespan which is the antithesis to what has been shown in numerous studies which look at the effect of calorie restriction on aging. Although three radicals are no longer believed to be the dominant component to the aging process, not all of today's theories have disregarded their contribution, but rather hypothesize that they are more involved in the later stages of aging.